Good evening, and welcome to the Thursday Camera Artist Guild Critique. I am your host, George Deloach. I'm a portrait artist and photographer's coach, and this is where we help photographers learn to master the photographic arts. Here we do critique. This is where you send your images in, and a second set of eyes takes a look at those images and tries to help you find ways that you can improve the quality of your work. Regardless of whether you're just beginning your love affair with photography or whether you've been like me in love with it for 50 years, there's always room to find new places to grow and develop. Uh, let's get over to the broadcast and take a look at some of those images. Okay, stand by. And again, here is the lady and her dog and you caught the dog right in the middle of expression, tongue halfway in, out. You want to get that those eyes over towards you. And uh, if you're going to do one like this one, I'm not thrilled with that fence in the background, but go to a longer lens and a shallow depth of field. It's late in the day, so you can get away with it. Throw all of this in the background out of focus with shallow depth of field. That'll separate her from the background. Move her off the fence some so that the fence isn't sharp as well. Move her up off the fence. You probably could have come forward 10, 12 feet and got identically the same shot uh, with the same camera angle, but thrown everything in the background out, kept their exposure, everything else the way it was, and then just make some noises or something to get the dog's attention. I literally make a whining noise when I'm photographing dogs, and it works. I just go, something like that and the dog will look at you and it only works a few times you can't get away with it very often but you get ready for your shot then when you got everything in line and position you make that noise the dog looks at you and bam you take the ex exposure uh, if you get 10 minutes out of a dog you're doing really good okay and we got George Butler George you got several up here so we're going to kind of shoot through it uh, you brought in one, which is your model here, uh, and the others are sports, so we'll look at those sports ones as we get in there. Uh, be, remember to always include all of the body appendages if you're going to do a full length. If you're not a full length, don't lose the foot over here. The foot is chopped off over there. That, that is a bit of a problem. And watch her hand positions change her hand position around a little bit she could have just as easily moved forward on the rock and then put her uh, thumb behind her torso her four fingers in front of her torso and that would have been a much more comfortable position for a hand that would have dropped her shoulder down so that it didn't look quite so awkward but your exposure is on and I like your, your lens choice in your shallow depth of field. Okay, this is another one, and this is another George Butler. Uh, you did get peak action. A couple of the sports shooters mentioned it. I agree with them that uh, the action is in the, the receiver and the tackler, uh, and all the rest of the stuff out here is unnecessary. Uh, this has got to be, uh, looks like training camp to me, uh, practice, because you got, uh, I, I don't think these are the, everybody's in shorts and stuff like that. That doesn't look like an actual game, but let's see what happens if you were to just uh, crop it in. Uh, you could, uh, on this one, it's going to have to be a vertical crop because, let's see here, there we go. Uh, maybe something like that would be a little more. We dropped them and wrapped them in there on the one-third compositional line. We've left enough room so that the action is moving the camera left, it'll go out. And we eliminated a lot of the elements there that were distracting from the main focal point. So just keep that into consideration when you are framing and uh, when you're doing your post-production. And uh, last image, uh, watch out for cropping off body parts. Uh, just, I, I know you are really going for the peak action, but all the rest of it uh, is part of that. So uh, zoom out, uh, move with your feet, 
uh, pay attention to your surroundings and uh, you know there you go just work it out okay this one is uh, G Johnson and I there's a lot to like about this one G I, I, I find a, a lot of things in there that I think are interesting and and well worth consideration uh, the thing that bothers me, I love the model, uh, the, the, the tennis position, you know, uh, all of that, the, the depth of field choice was fine. I might like to push that depth of field a little bit more to get the background a little more out of line. The camera angle's fine. What bugs me is the tennis, uh, net. And I know you were probably, you were trying to add it compositionally but it blocks the model. It blocks the model and most of her torso. And so anything that detracts from the model is not adding to the image. At least that's my opinion. Uh, other people may have different opinions, but that's the way I see it. I love this part, this portion of it up here, the face, the hands, the tennis racket, all of that is right on point, but that net just uh, doesn't work for me. Uh, this, on the other hand, works. Uh, the crop, I would have moved the crop down. You're almost about to hip joint crop. Drop it down to the thigh. You want to crop between the joint. So it should be down about, about middle of her thigh. That, that would be a perfect crop for this image. And uh, other than that, it's nice. Okay, Gary Duncan, and uh, I looked at this image, Gary, and when I first looked at it, I thought, is that a composite? Are those all three the same guy? Because their faces look so similar to one another that I thought you had done a composite, and then I realized there are different numbers on the jersey, and if you had done that and had them switch numbers, maybe you did, you know? And they got different color sneakers, but uh, it's still, it's it's nice, it's well executed, it feels good. So uh, that's what I expect from you on the sports stuff, anyway. Okay, here we go again. One more Gary Duncan. Now on this one, Gary, I'm gonna I'm gonna point out a couple of things. Uh, whenever you have something pointing towards the camera, be it the neck of a guitar, uh, the golf club, baseball bat tennis racket, arm with a pointed finger, it's got to be sharp. You, you got to be, you got to be, if this thing says PNG or Spalding or whatever, you got to be able to read that club. And right now, because of the shallow depth of field that you chose in order to keep the background out of focus, the clubs protrude into the foreground. Now, is there a way to do this and, and accomplish it? Yeah, but it gets a little complicated, and it, the only way you could do this one would be focus stacking. Uh, you can use hyperfocus, and hyperfocus operates under the principle that you have a greater distance, a depth of field behind the point that you're focusing at than you do in front of the point that you're focusing at. So you, rather than focusing on their face, you would focus on a spot somewhere up the elbow, somewhere along about elbow range, if you have, you have to check your depth of field and see what your depth of field is. I have a depth of field app on my phone. You can get them for any phone, Android, iPhone. Get a depth of field calculator. It'll let you plug in your camera, your lens, and your f-stop, and it'll tell you what that depth of field is. Some of them will even give you the hyperfocal distance. So let's say you had a one or, or two or three foot depth of field. Let's say just figure three feet with this one. Uh, and the club is about uh, maybe two and a half feet away from the subject. You could, if you have a three foot depth of field, that means that you've got maybe a foot and a half in front and, or, or a foot in front and about a foot and a half in the back. So you can focus up here a foot and a half or so farther up her arm and her face would still be sharp, but the club would be more closer to the, would be more closer, would be closer 
to the near end where your uh, depth of field begins to fall off on the near side. That's one way. The way I'd pull this one off, and also you want to keep that club out of her face so that it's not blocking her face. Uh, the way I would pull this off is with focus stacking, and that means you're going to do two shots. And I'm going to work, on, since you're outdoors and you're moving fast, I'm going to be working from a monopod. Uh, a tripod would be better if you can set this one up. A tripod is great, uh, but a monopod if you can't, but a tripod is the best. Set that tripod up, take one exposure, and you got to do this quick. Take one exposure, focus on the club, one exposure, and focus on the subject. Just click, change, click, change. And if you could get one in between, that would be good as well. But just nothing else, just change your little focal distance if you're using autofocus. You get on that little daisy wheel there in the back, click, 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 put it on the club, click, put it on the face, click and you can do it in a fraction of a couple of seconds. So, and you want to get them to hold their expression. And then in post-production, bring that in. And with layer mask, then you can bring the focus back in to the front where it's focused there. And that's called focus stacking and check it. You know, look it up and you can get uh, some more information on it. Okay, uh, there we go. Okay, Gary, thank you. 